Okay, so good afternoon. Um, so today we are starting a slightly, let's say, new topic. Uh, that is something in between need finding and uh, prototyping. So some of these things could still go within the need finding domain. Others can go in the prototyping. Some of them can be used bo in both uh, situation, both context, and so we uh, separate that. And we gave this name, analyzing and synthesizing, but it could also be called uh, defining and ideating, for instance. Because it's a series of technique that will allow us to start from the results of the need finding, to analyze further the outcomes, and trying to synthesize the outcomes. Uh, not an analysis and a synthesis that, in most cases, help the team doing the need finding or the team doing prototyping, clearly also as a reflection, but mostly uh, for analyzing and synthesizing for the others, for other people to make the reasoning, the decision, uh, the, the outcomes more clear to uh, other people, not to, to you that, um, not only to you that uh, are involved in the need finding phase and the prototyping. So before going to the next slide, uh, so that if there is any other student that still needs to come, we give uh, them a few minutes, uh, some administrativia, just to remind you. So tomorrow, we will not have a lecture like this, but Tommaso will be available in the room, and you can use the room to work on whatever you want, but in theory, on your project. If you need the room, if you need power outlets, if you need the infrastructure, tomorrow you will have the room for that reason, and Tommaso will be here to not here in this room, in, in the other room, to answer uh, any questions, not only about his team, but overall in the three project um, that you have. Hmm? So free time, let's say for you, to work on your project. Supervise, we call it in the calendar, in the schedule, supervise work group, meaning that you work, and if there is someone here supervising your work. But differently from the lab, it's, not, uh, it's, it's time for you to work independently, more than what happens in the lab. Uh, this is the first thing. Um, the second thing is, is that I will not be here this week uh, until Friday. And so if you write to me, expect some slower response. And we don't have the student hour this week for the same reason. Um, the other things, uh, I already wrote it on Telegram, but it's, we can say it so that it's recorded. The deadline for delivering the presentation, the slides for the first assignment has been moved one day. So now is Thursday, end of the, of the day. We on Friday have a look at the presentation you submit, and then in the labs hour, we will discuss group by group. The group is not needed to, to present all the slides, but just be ready to, to discuss what they put on the slides, to get feedback. So the slides are for us to see and for you to put something down, to organize the discussion for the feedback, but it's not something that you have to come here and present. And Friday, uh, labs uh, work, will work in this way. We will be, the three of us will be in the room since the first hour, since the beginning for all the 4.5 hours, and we will put in a consultancy mode. And so one of us will be, let's say, here on this table, another one will be over there in the room, another one will be in another place of the room, and we will speak one team at a time in the Bidley. 
Hmm? Each team of the group speaking with the, each groups belonging to a specific team speaking with the teacher of that team. Hmm? So all the groups of uh, AR, VR will speak with me, all the groups for digital well-being will speak with Alberto, and all the groups for AI meets human will speak with Tommaso. Hmm? But we will go four hours and a half. Hmm? So you can came when you are available without any problem overlapping, and you will need at most to wait until it's your turn. Hmm? We do this to give you something like 15, 20 minutes per group of discussion. We parallelize things in this way. And after your discussion, after the feedback, you can, you can leave, you can stay, it's up to you. Hmm? you. You need to be there for the feedback and the discussion, and then the rest of the time is, again, time that you can spend as you think is better. Hmm? That could be working on the next assignment, trying to implement some feedback already, etc. So again, four hours in the half, but you don't have to stay all the four hours in the half. You just need to stay until you speak with your the, the lab teacher, and then you can leave or stay or do whatever, what, what, what else. Hmm? Okay, any doubts of this? Anything that is unclear? Yes. I think so. Let me check. I don't remember by memory, but I think so. Let me check here that is quicker. Um, a summary, I think. And clearly you need to, to add to keep all the, the other material that you don't put here hmm, for, for the final report. Um, intro, what did you ask? Yes, interview results, well, you, you can. Hmm. So for sure, you need to put key quotes, hmm, the key moments, the key answer, the key summary of the answer, and some picture relevant artifacts that are related to the results of an interview. Hmm. So you, don't need, it's not mandatory that you report all the answer or summary all the answer, but at least the key points from the answer, the, the one that then will allow you to extract the initial user need and to have a match between what you say this is a need and what you uh, have listened to justify that need, hmm? okay? So if you then want also to summarize uh, the interviews in general, you, you can in this section interview results. Hmm? as you prefer in for, the, for the story that the, your slides will, will say. Any other question? No? Okay. So, game time. Um, same game, always the same. So, do you know what is this, first of all? Any guess? There are some hints written there. Yes, it's, it's for an elevator. Uh, it's not inside the elevator. No, it's for everybody. So uh, I, I, I took these photos in, in New York this, this summer. And in the, this hotel, you have like six elevators, and instead of having the buttons inside of the elevator, you have some of the screens here, each floor, and you select which floor you want to go. Here, you select also three, and then the system will tell you pick elevator number five. So you go to elevator number five, elevator number five will pick you uh, to floor number three. This is clearly, uh, for optimi optimizing the elevators so that if all people need to go to floor five, floor three, it, they will use the same elevator hmm? and without waiting so much. So they optimize the elevator um, space, let's say. Hmm? 
the operation of the, all the elevators. And this will also allow the elevators not to be too uh, crowded because you know how, ma how many people go into one elevator into the other. And so this is something, this is the same screen actually, uh, the same device that is attached on the wall just between some elevators and it will tell you in which, which elevator to take to go to your desired destination. So we have two things to evaluate for the Hall of Fame or shame. The first one is the screen per se, and the second one could be the entire device. So about the screen, which you have to, to tap a destination, basically. Uh, and then it tells you which elevator go to. It's more Hall of Fame or Hall of Shame? How many say shame? One, two, three, four, five. Why? Just the, the user interface without the device. Because I put the touch the wrong button. Mm, yes, and? Yes, okay. And, but this, this is not, however, a huge uh, problem because if you put the wrong button, uh, it would say go to elevator six and then you go back and place again. Not a big deal, yes, it's true. They are very, very nice, very, very close in one, in one each other. Um, and also here you don't know which, um, which floor you are going to, well, which elevator is, it's written on the elevator. Uh, but which floor you, you press. So if you press 16 and you think to press 17, you go. You need to go to the elevator and, and see a, a small a screen that is outside of the elevator and read that it's written 16 and notice that. So yes, it's, it's, it can be a problem, not a huge problem, but yes, it's a problem. Anything else? The yes, the letter CL. Um, L stand for lobby, uh, it's, it's an hotel, so the lobby, the C, I, I don't have probably ceiling because the hotel had minus one as, uh, as a floor. Uh, but yes, why L is bigger, for instance? It, it's the lobby, but it's still a floor. Yeah, it could be improved in that way. Anything else? Meaning? Yeah, it's not top to, it's bottom to, to, to up. It's, it's left to right, but from the bottom to the top, yes. Oh, yes, P, I don't know what is P, uh, but each elevator was called the PE1, PE2, PE3. Um, so PE5 is the five, fifth elevator, so on, on top of each elevator there was a label that say P5, and you have to look at the elevator. You have seven elevator in a row, and you have to, to pick the right one. Otherwise you go in, a, in another floor, probably. Um, okay, so more all of shame. Let's add the device, because this is, is um, so I don't know if it's visible, but the 17th floor here is disabled, it's the different color, not because it's pressed, but because it's disabled, because that was at the 17th floor, actually. Um, in the lobby, you don't have this. You have the same device with the same screen, but you have a lock close to each number. So you, if you press, nothing happened. Because the device is, is bigger, it's not just a screen. There is also something here. This is for calling help, but the, here there is something. It's not really visible, but it's um, some circle with the hand and the card on the circle. Not very visible, even not in, in presence. What means? A hand with a card on top of some circle, concentric circles. You have to tap the card, exactly. So the way this, this elevator works is that in the law, and nobody understand it. You, everybody had to ask the, 
the, the assistant how to use it because nobody understood it. You have to use the card that open your, uh, your door and the card here and then in the lobby and only in the lobby, it automatically detects which floor you are going to. Hmm? So if you tap your card here and you are the third floor, it will say use elevator PA4, let's say. Hmm? So you don't have, you, you cannot make mistakes because you have, the number is in the card, you just have to pick the elevator, but then all this screen space is useless. It's totally useless because you, you cannot do anything if not just seeing the number of the elevator. Hmm? So in the lobby work in that way, and which is another problem that's more functional in the lobby to doing that because on the 17th floor, like there, I can go everywhere. I'm already in the hotel, I can go in the lobby, I can go in the 26th floor, I can go everywhere. I can go on the 26th floor in the lobby if I have my card for the 17th. I cannot. I need to go to the 17th, go out, press 26, go in again, and go upstairs to the 76. And on the 26th, there was a rooftop bar, so you, you, you have to stop by your room, basically, go out of the elevator, repress, press again the number, pick another elevator, and go to the rooftop bar, if you want to. Um, so it was, it, it's, it's a nice idea, so more all shape, yes. It's a nice idea overall to replace the button in the elevator. The elevator didn't have any button inside, just one for help and for closing and opening the doors. But the implementation is, so let's say, um, to be worked on. Also, you have all this device, also the card reader in every floor, even if you don't need that, because the card reader was enabled only in the lobby. So if you are aware of the lobby, you have to use the card, not the screen, not the touch screen. If you are everywhere, everywhere else, you have to use the touch screen and not the card. So a lot of things to keep in mind. And then fortunately nothing, uh, with the example that your, your colleague was saying, nothing really terrible like, happens. I mean, if you pick the wrong number of the floor, you go in, an, in the wrong floor. You go out, press another number, and go there. But you're wasting time. You are, the system is not preventing you to do error. Just in the lobby is preventing you because you have the card. Hmm? So this is something that I, I met this, this year for the first time. I've never seen this. So I pick some picture. I take some picture for, for the course, actually. Only for the course, not for, for this course. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not uh, very, very great. Also, if you have a lot of people, especially in the lobby, you have to tap the card, then all of these appear, then you have to tap this X or wait for the screen to disappear, and then tap another card, and it's, it's not really fast. Like this screen stay here for 30 seconds. So you stay here, you read P5, and then you go, and the next people is waiting for this to disappear, or to, or you have to, this person needs to, to understand that you have to press the X to go back here, etc. Hmm? So they try to improve the elevators, and technically they did, because it's optimized. Hmm? Never found a crowded elevator in this way, because people were distributed equally in various elevator, but on the user interface, they, in all this user interface, they make some problem, they still have some problem with respect to the classical button that we, we press in the, but, in, the, in the elevators. So yes, more all of shame also this. I will put some one day, the one for the all of pain, I promise. Okay. Now, back to, to the content of, these, of this lecture. Um, that actually this picture is also something that is important for, for what we're going to speak in this lecture. Today we are going to speak about analyzing and one thing that we are going to speak about is the task analysis. Which are the tasks, the activities that are the people that we want to create an interface for are doing. So when you take an elevator, which are the steps, which are the tasks that you are doing? Well, you typically select a floor, you call the elevator, first of all, in a traditional elevator, 
you call the elevator, then one random elevator arrive. If you have multiple, then you go to the elevator, press the number of the floor, or tap the card plus press the number to authorize, if you're not in an hotel, to authorize your travel in the elevator. And then when the elevator reach the, the floor, you go out. So these are the tasks. And then you can imagine the task to redesign something like this. Instead of calling the elevator to find problems, to find a way to improve that task. So instead of calling the elevator and then pressing the button, they decide to put, the, pressing the button for the floor, they decide to put them in one single action. Select the floor and that this will also call the elevator. That is not a bad improvement per se as an idea. Because instead of doing two things, pressing the button, waiting the elevator, pressing the, the button for the level, for the floor, you just press one button and pick the right elevator for you. So in theory, this could be an improvement in how we use elevator. And so all of these can come from analyzing the task. All this reflection and also avoiding some of these errors can came after analyzing specifically which are the tasks and if we change the steps for accomplishing tasks, which are the impact on the users. And if we reflect not just one single person using the elevator, but 15 people needed to use the elevator, we can also change the activity, the steps of the activity to better understand how we can redesign any, or design or redesign any interface that we have, graphical or not graphical, like in the case of the elevator. So all of this is what in our simple design process uh, we called back then analysis. So we had what is wanted at our need finding, and then the next step is the analysis, the one that is before the design and the prototype of the actual user interface that you are going to, to develop. And then here the prototype go back to the analysis if you need to refine something. And if you don't, it's really quickly and go back again to the design. So the loop can also be here between the prototype and the design, as I told you in the second lecture probably. So, but this is more or less the loop. So here we are in the analysis and that will be also the next step for your project to came up with some, something that will bring you to the design of your prototype. So, which is the goal of this analysis and synthesis? Because it's also synthesis of, of information, not just analyzing for the sake of an analyzing, but also for representing this information for you or for the other. So the goal is to create some design goals. As it's written here as a representation that is intermediate, that is between the raw results of the interviews, the user needs that you can extract, and the design of the user interface in the first prototype. Something in the middle. And this something is in the middle is again needed for analyzing, so reflecting on the things that we, we discover, but not only to reflecting, but also to make explicit what we want to do, which are the goals, which are the user needs, to make everything more explicit. We tend to do this kind of analysis implicitly. You will have your interviews, you will have results from your interview, you will analyze them and will make a decision on that. And all of this is implicitly done by you. Here we are trying to make it a little bit more explicit and more structured. And then clearly in this explicit, not only making the analysis explicit, but also representing the results of an analysis and the design goal to move to the next steps. So the first thing that is more about the analysis is what is called activity analysis or, um, or task analysis. It's the stand, let's say the the default name is task analysis, but you can also find it called like activity analysis instead of task. That it's how people perform their activities and which are 
the activities that people perform. So task analysis is, again, the study of the way people perform their activities. And this can be done in various steps. This can be done during the need finding phase. This can be done after the need finding phase and before other phases like the evaluation. And the aim of the task analysis is to pick a task that is one of the most important concepts that we have in this moment for this stage of the course and try to unpack it, try to analyze it to understand which are the various components, which are the pros and the cons of doing things in this way, how we can optionally change some part and see the effects on the other, like they did for the elevator, for instance. They change the steps of the, of, of the activity. The activity is go to a floor with an elevator, and they change this activity. So the aim of task analysis is to explicitly specify, and again, explicitly, because you can implicitly say which are the steps of an activity, uh, to specify these four things, hmm? the steps, so what people are doing in accomplishing a task, in accomplishing activities. What things or what information do they use that are the artifacts, and how well they succeed in doing these steps with the information of the things that they use. Hmm? In terms of goals, hmm? so how well they succeed, and in terms of pain point, which tricks, which workaround they put in place to succeed better or to succeed in a faster way. And given the general activity. So let's use a simple task. So let's not read that. Um, so the simple task that we are going to use is cleaning up the house. You want to clean your house. The, the floor of your house. So which are the steps that you are going to do without reading the next slide, possibly? What's the first thing you are going to do when you want to clean this floor, let's say the floor of this, of this room? Imagine that you live here. That is not some distance from the reality, but... Um, sorry? Take a mop, yeah, let's say that we are more modern and we use um, a vacuum cleaner, hmm? so the electrical stuff, okay. So yeah, to take the vacuum cleaner, that's the first step. Then. The vacuum cleaner is already solved, alone. Uh, alone. Yeah, the, vacuum cleaner. the vacuum cleaner is the normal vacuum cleaner that you move, it's not the robot. Ah, yeah. It's not the automatic vacuum cleaner. That is. That is another, but let's imagine that we are not so modern. So we don't have the robot that cleans the house on our behalf. Uh, let's say normal technology. We don't have the, the, the mop, but we, we don't even have the Roomba, something in the middle. So we have the vacuum cleaner. First step, get the vacuum cleaner out of wherever we store it. Then, we have the vacuum cleaner here, and what we're we going to do? Use, but let's, yes, use, clearly. But how, what, which is the activity that we, which are the steps to you, how we use that? We move around the room. So I pick the vacuum cleaner in my hand and go like here and go around the room. Okay, but by using on the floor. And then, but before I need to do one thing. Yeah, if it's not a battery, I need to plug in the wall. Then I clean all the, the room, all the house, and then? No, 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 okay, Let's, we don't want to wash. We just want to, to remove the dust. Um, and then we have the vacuum cleaner still connected to the plug, and? We, and? Put it away. So these are possible steps. So we have an activity, and we, we try to, we know how it works. We do it, but these are possible steps. And here, there are a slightly different version of those steps. So the first one is, is the same, get the vacuum cleaner out. 
whatever it is. The second step is fix the appropriate attachment. Maybe you have to add some pieces to the vacuum cleaner. Maybe it's not totally, it's not ready to, to, to do its work. Maybe you have to change something. Then you have to clean the rooms, remove the dust. And we, we said that. We, here is not written plug the vacuum cleaner, but could be a step. Um, here there is another one. When the dust bag gets full, empty it. So it's not maybe every time you vacuum that you need to clean the, the dust bag, but sometimes you probably need to. And then put the vacuum cleaner away. So these are possible steps. So these steps can be either imagined by you or it's something that you came, that you extract from your observation, from your interviews. You see a part of a process, you see a task, an activity that is that process, and you can extract the steps of this process. And extracting the step explicitly, and we are going to see that, you can reflect on these steps separately. You can see if something is missing and you can see opportunities for improvement. So here is not written plug the vacuum cleaner, but if we add a step that is plug the vacuum cleaner, we can imagine a vacuum cleaner with a battery. So we don't have to plug it every time. We can plug it only when it's exhausted the battery. And that will change the steps we do. And similarly, when we have a vacuum cleaner without the dust bag, but we can throw it immediately after cleaning, these steps becomes from when the, vacuum, the dust bag is full to probably before putting the vacuum cleaner away, remove the dust from the vacuum cleaner. And these are opportunity for change that will change the steps not the activity, the activity will be the same, but if we are redesigning a vacuum cleaner, knowing which are the steps that the, major, the, the majority of the people do with the vacuum cleaner will help us to understand where and which step we are going to work on, which are the steps that we can improve it. In small way, or like your colleague was saying, in big way, just create a robot that cleans. So we don't have to clean the rooms with the vacuum cleaner because it's the robot to do all the work for us. But we have other steps around that. It's not that the robot mag magically appear in the room clean and then magically disappear. We need to care in a way about the robot. We need to put it in charge. We need to clean that. We need to repair it. We still, need, we still have work to do in the activity that is to clean the house. So all these steps, because this is clearly a very simple example, but all these steps are for a specific task. And if you imagine to redesign a vacuum cleaner, you need to know these steps. And most importantly, you, have, you need to have these, the tasks done with the vacuum cleaner very, very clear in your mind so that you are sure that your new vacuum cleaner is actually satisfying all the tasks that people does with that and not keeping any task unfulfilled. And these are the steps. So this is analysis. This is not redesigning. But these are the basic for making decision after. If you know how it works, if you know which are the problem, you can fix them, you can change them. And that will clearly change the steps. Maybe it will change the knowledge that you need, but not the task. The task will remain the same. And this again apply to uh, physical artifacts like the vacuum cleaner, apply also to user interface. A task for user interface, that we, we already make this example, but the task for user interface could be uh, book as, uh, an exam enroll in the next exam. That is the task. And then there are several steps to accomplish the task. And if you want to redesign that process, you need to know the steps. And you need to know which are the problem between the steps. When people have problem, 
in which step people have problems so that you can focus there mostly. So these are the steps and you also need to know and use different things. Uh, you need to, to know, you need to use the vacuum cleaner and you need to know how vacuum cleaner works. Hmm? Uh, you need to know the attachment of this vacuum cleaner, if you have. You need to know that you have a dust bag or you don't and you need to know how to replace it if it's full and you need to have a replacement for that. Hmm? These are requirements for, for you to accomplish the task. Hmm? If you don't have the knowledge about dust bag, you cannot do this step. Simply. And you, you also need to use clearly the room. You need to know the space, you need to know where to clean, etc. So you, you need to know some things, some more specific, like the dust bags, how to change it, etc., or all the attachments that a vacuum cleaner needs to have, and something more simple for us, like the space in a room or how to operate a vacuum cleaner. But we, in a way, are sort of expert user of the vacuum cleaner, because we, we know how to use it. But imagine to give the vacuum cleaner in the, head of, in the hand of people that never have seen one vacuum cleaner before. You need to provide them with some information that you have that are banal for you. But for them, it's totally a new thing, so you need to onboard, to onboard these people in the usage of vacuum cleaner. And again, this is just a simple example. Then you have the goals. So while the steps and the artifacts are just part of the analysis, so let's imagine that you want to improve the vacuum cleaner um, or the process to clean the house. You observe people cleaning the house. You do interviews for understanding the pain points, work around, or use this attachment instead of these others, or this attachment is totally useless, and I never use it. And so you, you have information. And these are things that are, you, you observe, you have. And similarly, the knowledge of the tools that these people are using are, are there. You can easily observe them, are more, let's say, objective under your perspective. You don't have you don't put in any point of view specifically because it's something that you observe or something that people explain to you. But if you're observing a person cleaning the house with vacuum cleaner, with the step we described before, that is, again, are one set of possible steps, not the only possible steps. We came out with a slightly different set of steps. We can also have and here is when our point of view as designer, as creator, or as engineer came in, is which are the goals? Why this person is cleaning the house? And so here I write four things, four possible goals that just by observing a people cleaning the house, we don't know. We can ask, we can imagine, but we can also imagine larger goals. So clearly, we can have goals that are narrower while you're cleaning the, the house with a vacuum cleaner to remove dust. That's the immediate goal. I'm cleaning to remove the dust. That's simple. Or we can move up and enlarge this goal. Yes, I'm cleaning to removing the dust, clearly. But I'm doing that because I'm, I'm tidying up the house after a party. So it's not the weekly cleaning. It's that I had a party, so I need to clean up. Removing the dust using the vacuum cleaner. So this is a slightly bigger goal. And another goal is that not just for tidying up, that could be done in any moment maybe, but also maybe I need to tidy up the house after a party, removing the dust, and my goal is hosting people hmm, for dinner. Hmm? You have your parents came in for dinner, and you had a party yesterday, and so you need to clean up, for instance. Hmm? So this is another wider goal. And you can go in, a, in the widest goal. You can add others in the middle, clearly. To have 
the goal for cleaning the house is to have a satisfied evening. That consists of the dinner, that consists of cleaning up after the party, that consists of removing the dust. And each of these goals can tell you a different story if you want to, again, redesign or the task or the vacuum cleaner. Uh, because if you want to just, if you want to focus on removing the dust, you can redesign something that will remove the dust faster or better. If your goal is tidying up the house after a party, clearly you can benefit from any improvement you can do from removing the dust. But what is another way to solve this goal, for instance? If you want to improve the cleaning of the house with this goal in mind, You can redesign the, the vacuum cleaner, but also you want to clean the house, which are the options that you may have with in, uh, infinite time and money. You get some people to clean for you. Your task is always the same, to clean the house. Your step for the vacuum cleaner will be always the same. But the goal, just slightly less narrow, can be satisfied by improving the process of the vacuum cleaner or to get some people and pay some people to clean up the house or not having a party in the first place in the house, for instance. You can have alternative. And according to the goal, you can come up with alternatives. So we are abstracting it a little bit from the context itself. So we, are, we want, let's imagine that it's a project. We want to improve how people clean the house. And we observe how they clean now, the steps. And then according to the goal that we have or they have, according to our perspective, our point of view, we can say, okay, we want to improve the vacuum cleaner that is the easiest things that came to our mind. Or given the task to clean the house, we can imagine things that are different from improving the vacuum cleaner, like create a service for quick cleaning after party, if that is the goal for which all our people clean up the, the house. And that same things could, could happen here for the dinner, clearly, and, but also you can go have dinner maybe in some other places hmm? or in another home or find a service that is scattering plus cleaning that is not needed here for the party because you need just to clean but could be useful for the dinner because you need also to have food. Hmm? So this is just an example clearly but you can from the same task clean up the house according to the goal be more or less creative on what you want to do, on why you are focusing on redesigning the interface, the experience with cleaning the house. And this can apply also to your project. When you are going to interview something, when you're going to observe something, you can stay with a narrow goal, that is the things that you're observing, the things you're asking, maybe you, you see some process, or you can move towards a wider goal and try to put things in a slighter, bigger context. And so instead of focusing on the specific tool, you can focus on something that will fulfill the task, but in a different way. So this is the goals where your point of view comes in. And then you have the pain points. And again, the pain points can be something that you observe and you notice, or can be pain points as opportunities for redesigning. And again, according to the narrow, to the goal that you have in the before, if you have a narrow goal, you can ask, okay, why you need to empty the bag? Can we redesign something that empty automatically the bag, for instance? According to the narrow goal, that is, 
Removing dust, you can say, okay, that step in removing dust is, let's say, a problem, and I want to focus on improve that specific step. Or a broader version, one of the other weather goals. Why you need a vacuum cleaner to have those cleaned up? I can have some people. I can hire some people to do that. I can create a network of people to clean the house specifically after parties, specifically for dinners, specifically for, or in general. Hmm? Or something in the middle, I can, as your colleague was seeing, saying before, I can create something like a Roomba. Hmm? And all of these will not change the task. Nothing of these change the task that is cleaning the room. Change how you reach the task. And all of these start from the steps, and all of these start from the artifacts that you still need to know. Because you need to know that for cleaning the house, you need to have an house, you need to have materials, you need to, to know how a vacuum cleaner works, etc. Just different level of perspective. Another example for task. So a person is preparing an overhead projector similar to this one, uh, for use, which are the steps. So first is plug in the, the, um, the projector, so not one. So this is a projector, uh, the classical projector, the one you put the material in. So you need to, to take the projector, plug in, locate how to turn on and off the projector. Here are steps more defined, more precise than before. So instead of saying turn on the projector, say where is the button to turn on and off? And then discover which way to press the button. It's a button, it's a switch, and you have to long press the button to turn on. And then after discovering, I press the switch. I press the button. So two, three, and four are just turning on. But it's just split in different steps. Uh, then put on the slides, orientate correctly, if you put the slide inside the projector. Align the projector to the screen. You want to project here. Don't, not in another way, so you need to align the projector, maybe uh, make it more straightforward, and then also focus, change the focus of the slides if it's not correct and you see a blurred image. So this is another example of the task. The task is preparing, the task could be preparing the projector for use or projecting some slides. And these are the possible steps that you again can observe can imagine, can add, as a way to understand how to accomplish a specific goal. And also here, we can imagine which are the knowledge that we have, that we need, which are the elements that we need. We need a projector, we need a, a plug, a power outlet, we need the slides, we need a screen to project, we need things. And here again, we can imagine the goals. Why I'm projecting? For a lecture, for seeing some pictures of my holidays. What's the reason for which I'm preparing the projector? And which are the pain points? I don't know how to press the switch. I don't find the switch to turn on the projector. I don't know how to put the slide in. Or maybe I put the slide in and I rotate it five times before finding the right position. That is clearly a pain point. A narrow version, again, of the goal, but a pain point. I don't, I'm not able, the projector is not helping me in understanding which is the right side in which I need to put the slide in. And all of these, etc. And all of these are opportunity for redesigning, for understanding how things work and how we can improve their working. But all of this is strictly connected to the important concept of task. 
So a task can be defined as, because we can define the steps, but we need to define the task before defining the steps. So a task is defined as a goal, an objective, something that we want to accomplish. Again, it could be narrow steps or broader version, the goal, but we, we, have to do, we have an objective. We want to do something with some set of ordered actions. We need to do these steps in this order. We cannot press the switch before plug in the projector. Or we can, but it doesn't accomplish the, the task. And similarly for vacuum cleaner, we cannot put it away and then clean up the house. We need to clean the house and then put it away, not vice versa. So clearly the order of the steps is important. All of these are very simple examples, but you can reflect on these on the digital world. Every action that you do, every time you open an application and you want to do something, that something is a task. That could be general, wide, could be very complex, it could be very simple. Like login could be a task. It's a goal to enter, to authorize, to, to do the authentication in a, in a user interface. And it has some action, opening, clicking on the login button, filling out the form with the username, filling out the form with the password, pressing the button to log in, see if we have an error, correct the error. If we don't have the error, I'm logged in. And the goal is very, very narrow, just log in. Or we can have a wider goal, enroll to an exam, for which login is one step of that goal. And the, the task is more complex in that way. So a task is a goal together with some ordered set of action. And the goal, in this sense, is specified as a state of the application domain that a work system wishes to achieve. So reaching a point in which the user, the technology, want to go. I want to roll to an exam, I want to log in, I want to do something, I want to clean the house. I want to reach that point to complete the cleaning of the house, to complete the enrollment in uh, an exam, etc., And can be specified clearly a particular level of abstraction. Cleaning the house is a goal, and we have seen before, uh, hosting a dinner uh, the day after a party could be another goal for which we need to clean the house. A task is, by definition, a structured and ordered set of activities or steps that are required, used, or believed to be necessary by an agent to achieve the goal. And the agent could be the human doing some stuff, or could be a machine doing automatically some stuff. And the task it has broken down to more and more detail level that are the steps until it's defined in terms of actions that are the steps we, we mentioned before. And an action step is a task that has no problem solving associated with it. So it's the simplest task you can imagine. You cannot decompose that step further or it's not reasonable to decompose the step further. So again, plugging a vacuum cleaner in the, in the wall is a step, because you cannot really decompose that further. It's already simple as a step. If you have knowledge about what is a wall, a plug, a vacuum cleaner, and a power outlet. Cleaning the house is still a task, but needs to be decomposed, because what means? It's mop, it's Vacuum cleaner is something else. And what you learn with task analysis, and then we will see um, two ways of doing task analysis in a formal, structured way. Keeping in mind steps, goals, knowledge, so artifacts and pain points always. And what you learn with task analysis, what your goal of the user can be. You can imagine also that. You can infer that. 
and especially what they're trying to achieve with that task. Uh, what people actually do to achieve this task, to achieve these goals. So you, you, if you observe people cleaning the house, then maybe you, their set of tasks, their set of steps is different from yours. So you learn that your way is not the only way possible. Or the way you imagine is not the only way possible. You, you're missing some points here and there. Uh, in some cases, what experience people bring to the task. Hmm? There could be personal, social, or cultural. Hmm? If I don't know what is something, I will do the task differently from something else. If I'm an expert in a domain, I will do the task differently from a person that is doing the same task for the first time, hmm? etc. So which experience we bring to the task? How users are influenced by the environment, that could be physical or virtual. Hmm? So what happens around us that influence the task? And again, how previous knowledge and, in, uh, and in experience not only influence the task, not only bring something to the task, but how they influence how they think about their work that includes the task, the workflow, they follow to perform the task, the steps they follow to perform the task, and again, the pain points that they experience to perform the task. So again, it's all defined in terms of steps, goal, partially artifacts that are the knowledge, the experience, and pain points. All these things is something that you can learn from with task analysis. Uh, why it's useful? Clearly, it's useful to understand in detail how people perform activities to reach their goals, their intended goals. So how they clean the house to reach one of the goals that they have. That could be the simplest one, removing dust again, because weekly cleaning, or the party, after party cleaning. And how you can imagine things to satisfy one or the other goal. And it's not, it's not mandatory that the current set of tasks to reach, the, reach that goal or the current set of steps to reach the goal is the right one. Or the only one possible, better than the right one, the only one possible. Maybe there are other steps, other tasks that will reach the goal in any way, like asking some, paying some people to clean the house in the example before. But it depends on the goal. That could be, again, your wider goal or the wider goal that you get from the people you're serving, speaking to, or you spoke with. And task analysis help in this, in general, in these six things. Uh, first of all, identifying the task that your application must support. So if you are designing something, you want to know which are the tasks that you want to accomplish and which are the steps that your application should satisfy to reach that goal. Hmm? We are creating graphic user interface, digital artifacts. So again, if you want to create something to um, handle the career of a student, hmm? the, the daily work of a student, then you will have a task that is about enrolling to the exam. And that will consist on a series of steps current steps with pain points, things that work, etc., and the steps that you will generate in your application that maybe are similar to the one that people are experienced already, maybe solving some problem in, the, in those steps. So you want to understand which is the current to design something better or different, possibly. But you need to understand which are the goals, which are the tasks, and which are the steps in that goal, and which are the knowledge around that. So identifying the task that your application must support by observing the current task, for instance, uh, to refining or redefining the application navigation, the search, the most common activities to have. So if you, if you have, three principal tasks, 
and two of them are reachable from the navigation bar, but not one of them that is hidden somewhere else, that probably that thing that is hidden something else need to bring up to the navigation, because if that is one of the three most important tasks, it should be easily reachable, for instance. Uh, you can use task analysis to gather better requirements of what you want to do to design better, again, understanding pain points, goals, etc., and which are the current steps, so that you can have new ideas on evolving the steps, uh, are useful in the initial stage of prototyping, initial stage of designing, because you need to decide in which direction you're moving. Again, think about the, the story between party and party. If you just focus on cleaning the app for removing the dust, you will create solution that try to satisfy that specific goal. You will probably redesign, you will probably design a better vacuum cleaner. If you focus on clean gals after a party, you can imagine a service of people, a network of people that you can pay or uh, exchange their hours for your hours in doing various activities and for clean the house. So they came here and clean the house, and you go there and cook for them or you pay them for cleaning the house. The task is always the same, but with different goals, you can focus on different aspects and solve the same need, the same goal, the same task, hmm, that is cleaning the house. So this direct where you want to go. And task analysis is also useful when you have an application and you want to test it. When you have a user interface and you want to test it. Hmm. So your user interface, again, is for enrolling an exam. Which are the steps that the people need to do? The right step. And which are the steps that do, they actually do? And how much they differ? Hmm? Are they following the steps that you had in mind or not? If they do, perfect. You are testing it, something that is usable, and it's fine, usable, used, and useful. But if they differ, or you have some steps in mind that then you forget to put it in the user application, in the user interface. Then there is a problem and you need to go back to the design stage or to the implementation stage and add that step that was missing to reach your goal that is again, in this example, enrolled into the exam. Hmm? So here there is a simple example, not coming from the need finding but for instance, in this case, tasks can be used to plan for the layout, which is the big task here. Print, print something. And then, which are this is the bigger goal, printing a document, the bigger task. And then we say that we can reduce this task. So here could be representing some steps. I want to print everything. I want to print one page. I want to print only the um, even page, only the odd page, even just page one to three and not the others, or page one, three, and five. I want to print a certain number of copies. I want to print what? In grayscale, in black and white, in colors, etc. And all of these can be either smaller tasks within the larger printing or steps in that task. Hmm? So which is the, pre the first step to printing? Open the window. And then if I need this, I need to go in one direction. If I need that, I need to go in another direction. But then if I go in another direction, the, the user interface should support me. If I just want to print page one, two, or three, and not the others, the user interface should be there ready to support me printing the three pages and not all the pages in the document. So if we understand the task, we understand the steps, we are able also to design user interface. And 
all these boundaries, uh, in general, or the area, reflect the decomposition of the task. The various steps, the various trees, the various paths that the task can have inside. Hmm? So in the bigger task of printing, we can have various things that happen, and we can condensate that in these, um, in these areas. Hmm? And again, this could be smaller task within a bigger task, that is print, or print could be the goal, and all, each of these, let's say, could be a task, in a way, made of each steps. Hmm? So by the definition we gave, or task, each of these would probably be a specific small task, and each of the voice will be some steps in the task. Uh, so well, where it fits in general, we already said that it fits between need finding and prototyping, but task analysis can be used again to extract information from observation, from interviews, from documentation. Maybe we have papers, we have elements, and we can also helpful for sort and classifying the information that we have, to understand which are the tasks, which are the steps in the task, which task came before the other. We need to log in before enrolling to an exam. We cannot enroll to an exam and after login. Hmm? Or maybe we can, but we, we need to reflect on that. Hmm? So in the current, for instance, in your system, we cannot enroll in an exam without logging in. But maybe if you redesign that part of the process, maybe we can see all the exams and then select one exam and then to enroll effectively, we need to log in. It's a slightly different process, same task, enroll to the exam with pros and cons. If you log in, you can see all your exams. If you don't log in, you see all the exams, and you have to pick one. So larger list, different challenge. How do you put all one million exams on a page? You don't, what, what strategy you use? So each task, each step, how the tasks work together influence dramatically the design of user application, can influence the design of user application. And will it also allow you to iterate and refine, to clarify better which is a task, if it's this is a step or a task in itself, etc. And the outcome of the task analysis can be manuals, other documentation, procedure. I have a task, I have steps. If I'm designing something and not implementing that, I can send the design, I can also send the list of tasks with their order, with their step, to the people that are implementing, so that they know which are the exact order and which things should appear and which things should work. It can also be useful for extract requirement, because it allows you to focus on the task, on the steps that people do or need to do to reach a goal, and not on the features of the system. I need a button there, a button here, to do this, to do that and especially uncover the mental model of the person. If you, again, want to discover how people clean the house and they came up with a set of steps that are totally different from what you had in mind, then, and you had to design something for them and not for you, then you can follow that steps in the, in the process, and not yours, that will be totally extraneous for them. So again, something that you learn how people think, and you can also, from task analysis, uh, make some design choices, like which are the words, which is the knowledge, which are the artifacts, then can be the layout of the application. The most frequent things, more visible, the least frequent things, or rarely used, less visible. In terms of objects, in terms of terms, and in terms of frequency. If I always go there, that could be the default option, for instance. If it's, that it's a mandatory step, that could be the default option. And then after, maybe you can have different options to give to a person. But all of this stem from the analysis, the definition, first of all, and then the analysis of the task. Uh, so when task analysis is easy and when it's not. Task analysis is easy when you have, it's clearly very, very easily when you have a well-defined workflow. I want to plan for a trip. I want to clean an, clean an house. Or some repeated activities. I want to schedule a meeting. And 
non, it's not important which meeting, but it's a schedule meeting on a calendar with some set of technology, et cetera. So that is easier because it's easier to track the process from them. It's easier to start tasks and steps from that because they are already made of steps. If you want to plan something, I will do one thing after the other. The difficulty is, is that, well, when you don't have workflow, but more open, you clearly can have um, more difficulties in doing task analysis, in instructing which are the steps. Which are the challenge? We do not design task. We design interface. And a task or a step does not necessarily map one-to-one -one with an element. So one web application can have multiple tasks. One step in a web application can do multiple steps. It should do all the steps, maybe it's just one page, one element, or one set of elements representing a set of tasks. So it's not that we have one task in one step and we can create one page for that specific step. It's something that we need to consider. Again, a web application has multiple tasks. The Portale della Didattica implements multiple tasks. The smartphone implements an infinite number of tasks but it's one device designed in one way to support all those tasks through application, through other mechanism. And people use the same interface and application also to achieve slightly different results because they have slightly different goals, like in the example of before, and we cannot imagine all of that. We can be creative, we can be comprehensive, but we cannot really imagine all the possible tasks and all the possible goals that people have in mind. We can serve well, we can try to serve well a specific part of the population that will be our target user and try to satisfy them. But then also them in some moments, they will have a different objective, a different goal than for instance, the one we observed the winter view with. So here, there is when our let's say, designer skill, our um, engineer skill should come in hmm, to try to fill the gaps or to imagine which are the bit of the gaps. And there are many techniques to formally do task analysis. One is ethnography, observation. Observation is a good way to get to analyze tasks because you observe a task. You ask people to do task in a way. You observe what they're doing, you note down what they're doing. If you need to observe people cleaning the house, you can easily get the task and set the steps because you observe them. They pick on things, they do this, they do that, it's immediate. But there are other two methods that we are going to, there are other methods, but two of them, the task of the composition and the knowledge-based technique is something that we are going to uh, discuss to decompose the task into subtask and the ordering and reflect on task, what is a task, etc., in the next lecture next week. Mm -hmm. So for today, it's we can stop here, also because it's almost time. Uh, I'm not starting the hierarchical task analysis in the last five minutes. Uh, again, tomorrow there is no lecture, but the room is there for you with some people in it, and if you have any question, I'm still here for five, 10 minutes to unplug everything. Otherwise, see you on Friday.